Hello. Judo Gamer here, bringing the long awaited F Zero Let's Play. Sorry it's taken such a long time to get down to this. I've generally just either had about two. Right. Recorded it once, failed, and failed twice. Right. Mute City 1. Now the beginner. With the Blue Falcon. Okay, not too sure to start. Don't think to know is that this stage appeared. The course appears as a stage in Super Smash Bros. Four for 3DS. Right. So, I'm basically just gonna spend this entire race talking about F Zero. In case you don't know what it is. Right, so the main thing that separates this from something like Mario Kart is no, that separates this particular version of F Zero on the Super Nintendo from Super Mario Kart is that this is a solely single player game. There's no multiplayer. Second of all, there's that power meter, which you maybe cannot, cannot see. If you hit one of these barriers, that takes away some of that power meter. Along with also hitting other cars as well. Well, if that power meter goes down to the bottom, your car blows up and you have to do the race again. You have a certain number of spare machines, and once you've used all of them, you get a game over. Every lap starts on lap 2, as you will see right here. Got another an S, that's a boost, gives you some extra boost of speed. That on my left is in the recovery zone. You can use that to fill up your power meter again. Note, when your power meter gets to a certain low enough level, you'll actually go slower. That's a jump plate. Just hold down the down button and you'll go further. These cars here are not other races. This is as in F-Zero. You have to finish in at least third to go through to the next race. It doesn't use a point system like Mario Kart. F-Zero X, on the other hand, which is the next proper F-Zero game, does go to the point system. It also so jumps up the number of machines from 4 to 30. Most, I think, until about Mario Kart 8 or so, I think the most amount of different races, if you get what I mean, though, most are unlockable by beating different cups. F0 is a game that is known for its difficulty, its computer aggression, I suppose to some degree its, unfa its unfairness. In F0 X, you also gain the ability to attack machines with a side attack and a spin attack. In this you just gotta rely on your racing skills. Note, some of the flashing cars that might appear, they are bomb cars. They do more damage if you hit them, just explode. Well there's Mute City 1 as a course, pretty easy, there's just one jump plate, just gotta mine the dirt, there's a bomb car right in front of me. The only difficult thing is this turn here, just hit R to go around it, sort of drift, and you, can, you can't really lose this course. And we always finish the race at 319 kmh for some reason. Right, Big Blue, it's F0X, Counterpart is a stage in Melee, Brawl, and Ultimate. One of my personal favourite stages, despite being one of the worst. I just love that jazzy F0 Big Blue theme. F0 is also known for its pretty good soundtrack as well. I'm getting to a little tussle with this machine over here. So, what does Big Blue do to up the difficulty from Mute City? Not much. Yeah, there are some sharper corners like this one here that you can't really use full throttle. Especially this 90 degree angle corner here. This ice patch, which really isn't much of a problem at all. And that's it. I can't really turn the volume up, but I'll probably just end up crashing. I'll do it when we finish the race. Or if I could pause it. It's a really good song. <laughs> I'm just tapping my fingers on the controller. Note, I am playing this on a mini Super Nintendo, not the original 90 Super Nintendo. Well, it's a really nice, fast flowing course. Now then, let's talk about the other machines. This one driving the Blue Falcon. You may know if you've ever used Captain Falcon's Final Smash. Basically, it has the second highest acceleration, the second highest grip, handling. But it has the second lowest top speed, you see the best that I'm averaging around 400 and 450 or so kmh. That's how fast we got to back there. The yellow knight. Okay, the machine that always starts on my left, side bloom, that's the fire stingray. That machine has the worst acceleration, but it has the highest top speed and arguably the best cornering, so it is 
realistically the best machine to choose. The green machine that starts oh, it's right next to me on my right, that's the Wild Goose, has the second highest top speed, second worst first acceleration, and the second worst grip. So it's kind of fairly below average. And then there's the Golden Fox, which is the yellow machine, our aim that's always getting the best acceleration. It's getting the best start, because well, it has the best acceleration, but the lowest top speed and the worst vertical cornering, so it's the most difficult machine to really work with. The Blue Falcon is arguably the second best for a club by Stingray. Right. Now, speaking of the Fire Stingray, anyway, the Fire Stingray's pilot, Samurai Goro, the, uh, the weird thing is that we're in a universe where cars can fly and we've got travel that can go to different planets, yet he uses a sword. Kind of reminds me of that episode of The Simpsons where I was in Buck McCoy. Last time. Now, if you get more than 10,000 points, you get an extra spare machine. I've got B's accelerate in this. Alright, Sand Ocean. This definitely does step up the difficulty a bit. Bumped into the Wild Goose, there's our dirt patch there. You've got this chicane here, which isn't really much of a problem. This is, you generally just got to go into it no, no, full left trigger. You got down here. Then you just got, then you got the dirt signs, so just got mine there. Loop tight corner there. Then you got this loop here. You can usually go into it at full speed, and you will sort of go into a bit of a slide. So I'll mine up there. Right, I never really try and use the boost here. Four laps left. Yeah, you have to do five laps in this. Yes. Whereas, and there are five courses, whereas F0X. The cars do go much faster. You average around 800, 900 kmh, whereas here we're averaging around 300, 400. Oh, fast stingrays right behind me. F0X, you only have to do three laps, but there are six courses instead of, instead of five. I'm not having the best time against the fire stingray right here. And that's the wild goose that's got to be behind me. Chuffing behind the golden fox, that means the boost. So with some energy. It's always best to go slow on energy fields as then you'll recover more. Went to the dirt a bit there. Test so animation does step up the difficulty a bit. Whereas Mute City 1 and Big Blue were quite easy. This does step up the difficulty a little bit, but I mean I've played this course plenty of times, so. Not one to boast, but I'm uh, kind of an expert. This is also the only sand ocean course in the entire of F01. The Super Nintendo same with Big Blue, along with Silence and Firefield. Silence will appear later on. Later on in this cup, it'll actually be the last course we get to assemble. So we call pinballing effect. Bouncing from one barrier to another. Firefield will be the last race in the King League. F Zero's Firefield is known to be an incredibly difficult course. Though, trust me, you ain't seen difficult F Zero courses until you get to F Zero GX. That game is hard. Trust me. Okay, yeah. That check meter is always handy. One thing I like about this game is it doesn't have rubber banding like Mario Kart. Because Mario Kart 64 has rubber banding. It would have rubber banding oh. into the barrier. I like how that um, like structure in the background looks like a cowboy hat. That one looks kind of like an armor star shell. These these orange cars are just the bane of any F0 player. The sole purpose is not to be other races, they're not other competition, it's just to get in the way. I, I forgot I had a boost actually. But we finished the race in first place nonetheless. Fire Stingray just coasting behind me. You can press A or B. Right, Deathwind 1. As you can see down there, the course is just a loop. But this course has its signature wind, basically just blows you along a little bit. Deathwind never appeared in any other games, though it's believed that Zero X's track Devil's Forest is believed to be based on it. Right, we're also introduced in this course to Dash Plays. It basically just, for a brief second, max out your top speed. And Computers are really good at getting on them. 
Right, there are four dash plates split out across this oval. Two on each, bigger, two of the, two on each of the long straights. One, or one on this one, two on the other. The only thing to do is just mine the dirt and the other cars. It does have a nice theme though. If you really want to just be broken, you know, I mean, you really just want to rub it in, you could use a boost and go on a dash plate if you wanted. That's probably not recommended if you're going to go on this. I don't think Deathwind wants that dangerous. Just to be honest, it, like I said, it's just a loop. There's not really much harm. I suppose you could boost into one of the barriers. So you can see for a brief moment we hit 900 and 800 kmh. Oh, there you go, I hit one of the bomber cars. The golden fox bumped into me and hit. Alive. Like you'll notice, every lap that safe thing goes down, that basically means what place you have to be in to continue on to the next lap. You'll hit that orange car there. You're definitely there. Yeah. We've got that next one pretty good. Oh god, this is what we call pinball effect. <laughs> That's what you don't want to do hit a dash plate, then hit another car. I'll find a lot of pressure, say the boosties on the dash plate, you can pressure out yourself if you want. Alright. Right, just because. Oh, we had to stink past that and hit the dash plate. Alright, we've just got one more course after this. Right, I don't know what's got. Alright, just tap the dash plate. Oh, God. That one's car. I'm still finished first. That's the golden fox right behind me. <laughs> we still were able to finish first on every lap. Right, silence. It is anything but silent. Why do the weird things that there kind of like pickles? <laughs> right. Right, so we've got some corners. I love silence. Right, we've got a shortcut here. These things on my left and right, they are mine. They are mine. They're minefields. Basically, don't hit them, otherwise they explode. Right, science definitely does step up the difficulty a bit with some really annoying corners, plus you that there. That sort of S type curve. This ain't so difficult. The idea will be to try and just slightly clip the barriers to go through this thing. So you sort of clip them so that you don't hit. Probably hit them and bump into them. That's sort of the strategy to go with. We can go around here. You can use some of these a boost on the jump plate. So I can do it right there, just clipping it. Right, you need to swap. Best idea is not to use any acceleration, just keep the pole down L and R. Right, that's all energy. You really have a 90 degree corner. Right, let's take the shortcut. If you're good enough, you can sort of drift in and hit the jump light properly and just hit the down button to get some extra distance. For one course in the Queen League you will need to hold down to the down button for a jump, otherwise you will just consistently just blow up your machine. Personally I would just say I find the Queen League easier than the Night League, personally. Silence can be a bit difficult the first time around, but once you get the hang of it. That's what I mean, once again, not clipping it, I just found it. Not clipping and bumping in. in lost position to the golden fox. Right, on the inside. So that's the thing with F0, it's it's down to skill. It's not like Mario Kart where generally I mean a race, you winning and losing could just depend on whether someone gets a blue shell, you get a mushroom, you get a banana, opponent get oh, oh, that was bad. Just thumped into it. That was what you don't do, kids. <laughs> yeah, so I say, I rate some Mario Kart, you winning and losing could, like I say, could come down to someone getting a blue shell or you getting a banana. Whereas with F Series, it's more down to skill. I suppose, you know, being good at the game and we were able to win, which is the moment. Extra life, that doesn't matter. You get this nice little ending theme. 
It just shows you how well you did in each race. Let's see. Let's just watch your car just go around. I wonder if you turned out to get to see a front view of the car. You don't really get to see a back view. Because FC uses mode 7 where the Porsche rotates around the car, not the other way around. This seems to be because they look like pickles. Or, I don't know, baguettes, maybe? I don't know if that's supposed to be like a moon in the background or just a wig on a mannequin head. I don't know. <laughs> the graphics are really weird. And what's all this purple stuff around us? What is it? Is it grape juice? <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh, we're able to finish every... Not every race and every lap in the first, but... We finished every race in first, just not every lap. I just want to one. Alright, we can have a look at our lap times. We did the second thing to have already done in the past game, right? The fastest sand ocean time! <laughs> Not too bad on silence, as well. Alright, we're gonna exit there. Hope you enjoyed the first part of the F Zero Let's Play. Next time we'll be doing the Queen League, where we'll be tackling with the Golden Fox. And after we'll do the King League with the Fire Stingray. Hope you enjoy, guys. This is G Gamer, signing off.